Hi everyone, welcome to Difference Frames the World, a channel to see the world differently. Please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification so you will not miss our videos uploaded every week. Today we talk about the South China Sea, where 16 countries allied forces scrambled to a military drill pointing at China. The US and the Philippines launched their annual joint military exercise, Bali Katan, or shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder drills, with more than 10,000 soldiers from Washington and 5,000 from Manila. In addition, France, Australia, and 12 other countries sent varying numbers of observers. The 16-nation coalition army flooded into the South China Sea. This exercise is for the United States and the Philippines to carry out a back-to-back -back series of exercises, the largest ever in decades. It is also the first time such drills are held outside the territorial waters of the Philippines, close to the South China Sea and the Taiwan Strait. Before the start of the exercise, the U.S. military, for the first time in the northern Philippines island, Luzon, deployed a medium-range missile system. This system can launch cruise missiles with a range of 1,800 kilometers, covering the vast majority of China's coastal areas. The explanation given by the U.S. military for this is that it is a necessary step in the exercise, and it is unknown whether the missile system will be withdrawn afterward. In the exercise, the United States and the Philippines did not hide their hostility to China. The Philippine military brass said that the primary purpose of the exercise was to prepare for war. The two armies simulated the attack on Huangan Island and the sinking of a Chinese-made warship. This warship was initially a civilian ship China sold to the Duterte administration when China-Philippines relations were still good, the Philippines bought the ship to transport oil. Later, the Philippine military saw its high quality, so the civilian ship was transformed to serve as a supply ship mission. It was also the Philippine Navy's only Chinese-made ship. Now, the US and the Philippines set this ship as a target, hinting at China being their imaginary enemy which also once again confirmed the Philippine military senior officials' words that they are preparing for war. China's PLA responded immediately, announcing a series of military exercises in that region. According to China's official news outlet, CCTV, the PLA outlined the Forbidden Zone in the South China Sea a few days ago, indicating that the Chinese military will hold exercises there. Although we have yet to learn the specific arrangements, the Chinese army is bound to deploy ships and warplanes close to the U.S. and Philippine exercise area and respond to provocations with actions. The Pentagon thinks it can deter China by putting its missiles on China's doorstep, but the U.S. army needs to realize that they have also entered the range of Chinese missiles. China has the world's most formidable rocket force and deploys its aircraft carriers along its coastlines. Although Beijing's overall military strength is less potent than America's, it has gained an upper hand in the West Pacific. The current Philippine government believes it can rely on the U.S. Still, it should be remembered the U.S. aircraft carriers retreated in 2016, when the Chinese were resolute in defending their sovereignty in the South China Sea. Eight years have passed, and China's military strength is much more muscular than in 2016. It is also worth mentioning that the Chinese soldiers do not fear Americans. They forced the UN army led by the US to flee southward by hundreds of miles in the Korean War in the 1950s, when they did not have lethal weapons. The US spent two decades in Vietnam but failed, they escaped from Saigon in the 1970s, a rehearsal of what they withdrew from Afghanistan after Biden stepped into the White House. Several years after America retreated from Vietnam, the Chinese also went to war with Vietnam in the late 1970s, and they approached its capital, Hanoi, within a month. The Pentagon's military expenses have constantly shocked the world, almost hitting US$1 trillion US dollars in 2024, 40% of the world's total. Still, they have missed one fact, the US military's corruption. US Congressman Mike Walls questioned US Air Force Commander Frank Kendall about a series of problems at a national conference, one of which was about a small bag of casing accessories. He said such a small bag can be sold in China for $2. However, the U.S. Air Force's purchase list offered a price of $90,000. Suppose the U.S. Air Force will pay $90,000 for that accessory. That Chinese supplier can easily surpass Bill Gates and Elon Musk and become the world's richest guy. 
The U.S. military budgeted nearly $900 billion in 2024, more than the other nine top 10 countries. However, how much will be used to strengthen America's national safety? A large portion will flow to corrupted officials' pockets. Among the rest of the military expenses, many weapons are shipped abroad to support other countries, not for the United States' national security. When American politicians exaggerate threats from Russia and China, they should look into the structure of their military expenses first. Although America's actual military expenditure is far less than $900 billion, they have sold excessive weapons and ammunition worldwide to create chaos and unrest, safeguarding the so-called freedom and human rights, which have become derogatory words under specific contexts. Joe Biden just signed a $95 billion aid package to support Ukraine, Israel and Taiwan, and we are pretty sure the United States will not send flowers and balloons to those regions. By the way, Joe Biden held his second summit for democracy in March 2023, and Israel was invited to address the event. Ironically, a humanitarian crisis has unfolded since October 2023, just half a year after the summit. We discussed how the US supported Israel against the world in the previous video, so we will not elaborate on it here. Viewers who haven't watched it can search for that video on the channel. Now that 16 countries went to the South China Sea for the joint military drill by the US and the Philippines, should we worry about the situation in that region getting out of control? Will the Philippines become the second Ukraine in the West Pacific? We hardly think so. Although Joe Biden thought he could simultaneously deal with Russia and China in Asia and Europe, the US does not have the military strength to do so. The Ukraine war has been ongoing for over two years, Russia has not been defeated yet, even if NATO sent an unprecedented supply of weapons and ammunition to Kyiv, and its member states deployed volunteer armies in the field. In the Middle East, Israel might drag the US into a war with the Arabs, which the US tries its best to avoid. Initially, the US wanted to use Israel to instigate unrest in that area so it could divide and control Muslim countries, but Israel is not a puppet anymore. Instead, it has become a troublemaker for Washington. The US needs China's help in many areas. Its provocative actions in the South China Sea, including the Taiwan Strait, are merely attempts to pull China back to the negotiation table so Beijing will help solve the problems in the Middle East and stay away from Russia in the Ukraine conflict. When the US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, visited Beijing and met Chinese President Xi Jinping, Hamas sent its envoy to China. It means no country or region worldwide can ignore China's influence over international affairs anymore. For decades after World War II, the US has not fought directly with a world power alone, not even with the former Soviet Union during the Cold War. Most American politicians, either nonsensical orators or belligerent warmongers, are keen on interests. They lavish taxpayers' money for personal gains, and they never want to shed blood of their own. When Joe Biden signs the $95 billion package for Israel, Ukraine and Taiwan, he knows he will not be asked to withdraw a penny from his account, nor will those lawmakers. Instead, they might gain something from under the table, which they will never admit. Of course, they will not send their children and grandchildren to the battlefield and expose them to life threats, even if it is for their country's national security. It is still America's taxpayers to shed their kids' blood after flattening their pockets. We have often said that the US will not fight Russia directly, and we still maintain that before Moscow uses up its nuclear arsenal, Washington's politicians will never combat Russians. The same applies to China, which is more powerful than Russia in many fields. Today's China possesses the world's most formidable manufacturing capability, like America during the Second World War. If Beijing is forced to go to war with Washington, China will have the final victory if both sides do not use nuclear weapons for mutual destruction. In the South China Sea and Taiwan Strait, the US flexes its muscle to threaten China, but it is more like a clown's show. The US will continue to act like a bully, and Beijing will continue to show its anger and protest, but neither of them will fire the first bullet. Big powers quarrel, not fight if they do not have to. However, the time is on China's side, and Beijing can wait. Manila and Taipei are merely two puppets, but hopefully, they can be more intelligent than Ukraine and avoid involving themselves in a hopeless war with Beijing.
If war does break out someday between Beijing and Taipei or between China and the Philippines, which is least likely, the U.S. will evacuate its troops as fast as it can, as it did in 2016 when the Philippines needed it the most. History repeats itself and America is already a history teacher 